Picture a tiny, isolated countryside village surrounded by farmlands in the depths of bitter winter, possibly the most landlocked place in the whole of the country. A living room in the early 70s, orange curtains, orange carpets, orange chairs. The central heating is on high. It's like the inner core of the sun, and everyone is wearing thick socks and cosy jumpers. A boy lies on the floor in the open doorway, enjoying the cool draft breezing over him, and he is wearing nothing but his vest and pants. It's his usual spot, and none of the other family members think of it as remotely odd, as the boy always complains, feeling too hot. Well, that boy was me. I did and still do feel like I have a wonky inner thermostat. So I'm here today to talk about my passion for immersing myself in freezing cold water. I love cold water swimming. If Zeno, the father of stoicism, had a swim club, I'd probably be the very first member. In fact, you could say I find comfort in discomfort. Five years ago, I signed up to the Dart 10K, a marathon open water swim down a river in Devon. And to ensure I did it, I committed myself to raise money and swim in memory of my dad. He died earlier that year and had suffered from mild dementia. Ironically, dad never learned to swim, and I only found out the reason for his fear of water at his funeral. He'd nearly drowned as a young man, ironically also in a river in Devon after he'd leapt in to rescue a young lady. In the months leading up to the dart, I trained three times a week or more in all conditions to ensure I was both mentally and physically prepared for what was supposed to be a beautiful midsummer sunrise swim. As I entered the water, however, with 500 other swimmers that dawn, there was a howling gale, with broken branches and debris scudding across the face of the river. And not only this, but I also suffered a catastrophic wardrobe malfunction. As I submerged, the left lens of my goggles rapidly filled up with brackish, murky river water. I stopped and emptied it. It filled up again. I emptied it again. It filled up again. Impossible. Swim 10K with only one eye. But how could I not do it? It was for my dad. It was at this point, after finishing the dart and relishing the challenge, I thought, why stop swimming outside just because the weather is changing and the mercury is falling? And it was here that I thought I really enjoy swimming in cold water. But I never really want to go cold water swimming. It's painful and entirely counterintuitive. Who wants to undress in freezing cold wind and rain when you can stay in bed with a nice cup of tea? You have to force yourself to do it. And it's this forcing yourself to do something unpleasant that is ultimately beneficial that gives you such a tremendous sense of satisfaction and achievement. It's as if I'm swimming with Zeno himself. As I slowly enter the water, my mind is noisy and thoughts move quickly. There's already a battle starting between rational sense, get out, Simon, get dressed and get warm, and irrational motivation. Go on, do it. Cause yourself some pain. The skin on my feet and legs is on fire. I keep my arms relaxed and by my side, so my fingers and hands sink into the water to get a sense of the jolt about to come, and I continue to walk forward slowly. Finally, as the water reaches waist height, I take a deep breath in, lean forward, and dive. The cold smacks me hard in the face, punches the air out of my lungs, and I exhale slowly underwater through a gritted jaw. As I surface the involuntary gasp reflex, that which causes panic and inhalation of water in those who drown, kicks in and I consciously focus on keeping my breath slow and controlled. I'm now in the grip of cold water shock. My heart rate increases. I can hear the blood pumping in my ears as it gets quicker and quicker. As my heart rate goes up, vasoconstriction occurs. My blood vessels narrow and my blood pressure increases too. All these responses taking seconds to occur. Ironically, Swimming in cold water feels like you're burning. This all sounds great, doesn't it? Am I selling it to you yet? 
After the initial few seconds of sensory mayhem, all my nerve endings are now jangling. Thousands of tiny needles pierce me all over, and I'm glowing. The bones in my toes and fingers are pulsing with pain. The sinus spaces in my cheeks and eyebrows are throbbing. Imagine ice cream brain for your whole face. But then, after a few minutes, something very strange and wonderful happens. My skin is numb, I've controlled my breathing, and my brain is releasing endorphins, the feel-good chemical. My mind has been blasted clear of noisy and unwanted thoughts, and now it's just me moving through the water, focusing on nothing other than sensations in my body, and feeling about as alive as I think is as humanly possible. And this is the joy of cold water swimming. After all the anxiety about doing it and not doing it, the pain and trepidation of getting in, every time you do it really is the most life-affirming sensation. But beware the siren call of cold water. I once stayed in freezing cold water too long and realized I'm becoming hypothermic. I know this because I experience the attractively entitled claw hand. It's as if your hands have said, right, that's it, we're giving up, we've had enough. And in fact, they are, as the fingers of your hand very slowly start to close. But we are amazing things, humans, built to withstand great extremes. And one way to find out whether you are becoming hypothermic is to see whether you can still touch your thumb and little finger together. With the swim done, it's on to the final challenge, getting dressed and getting warm and quickly. Even after 20 minutes of exiting the water, my core temperature is still dropping rapidly, and if left unchecked, could lead to a series of nasty reactions, collectively known as afterdrop, which can be dangerous. Ice swimmers will often keep an eye on each other for the umbles, telltale signs they've stayed in the water too long and could be in danger. These umbles include the stumbles, loss of coordination, the mumbles, inability to speak coherently, the fumbles, slow responses, and the grumbles, change in mood or behavior. And then come the shivers. Now, I realize what I may have done at this point is simply present a litany of horrors awaiting anybody ever thinking of going cold water swimming. But as the popularity of cold water swimming um, increases, so does the list of benefits based on medical research. It's been proven to help those suffering from mental health issues, anxiety and depression, but it also boosts your immunity, decreases inflammation, burns loads of calories, gives you a massive endorphin rush, and revs up your libido. So what's not to like about that? But I think the most startling research only came to light last year, and it's amazing. Blood taken from hypothermic swimmers, actually at Parliament Hill Lido, was found to contain a cold shock protein that when used in tests on animals, was actually found to repair damaged brain synapses and could help those suffering from dementia. And I can't help think about my dad again at this point. But above and beyond all these facts, and I think personally, for me, the reason as to why do it, still lies in that idea of stoicism of pushing yourself outside your comfort zone to do something that makes you feel alive. But I also have never seen smiles so broad or heard screams and laughter so loud as I do every Sunday morning throughout the winter as I swim with a group of friends. Friends who've gone on to become the people who I'll be swimming the channel with at some point this year. So, as you sit in your comfortably heated homes, staring at screens, Imagine what an intense cold shock of clarity could do for you. Give it a go. Zeno would be proud of you. Thank you. <laughs>